Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I've got a card for you using Vaughn Fawn's Joy to All, Jump for Joy, A Bug Deal, Critters at the Dog Park, and Critter Chatter Pets. So I've stamped all my images on some Spectrum Loire Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink, and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. I'm starting with my fall leaves, and the first combo that I'm going to use is RV63, RV66, and RV69. I wanted to do a little bit of a non-traditional color palette today. It's still very fall and very jewel toned, but it's not gonna have um, like the yellows and the greens and the oranges. I wanted something that was just a little bit more unique. So I'm starting with this kind of burgundy maroonish shade. And I did have to go over that twice to get a nice blend between the RV66 and the RV63. The RV63 is quite a bit lighter, so it just takes a little extra work to get it to blend, but not too much. Um, just a, nothing that a second layer won't help. So I'm just gonna pick a few leaves here and there to color with this combo. Always starting with my darkest shade, that RV69, and laying that shadow in where other leaves are overlapping it. So that would be where there would be less light. So I'm just adding the darkest there and then blending out with the RV66 and then the RV63. And for the rest of these, I will do the second layer off screen just to save some time so you don't have to sit there and watch me color everything twice. So I'm going to do one last leaf down toward the bottom of the pile, and then I'm going to do one of the smaller leaves off to the side. Those are just going to be floating freely, so I wanted to have a, a similar color palette on those as what is already mixed in with the leaves. So next I'm going to use some purples. I'm choosing V93, V95, and V99. These purples have a lot of gray tone in them, so they're very dusty, and I think they work really great for fall. I think they complement the RV60 colors that I already used. So I am going to just pick and choose a few more here to color and um, just start the same way, always using that darkest shade and adding those shadows where other leaves are overlapping it, and then where the leaf would be most in the light is where I'm going to put my highlight. So I did four of those magenta leaves, and now I'm doing three of the purple, and just skipping around here and there, trying to make sure that there are never two leaves of the exact same shade overlapping one another. I like to spread that color around that leaf pile, it draws your eye, all around and it just I think it looks it a little bit more cheerful and colorful that way so once I finish that third leaf in the pile I am going to do one more of the leaves off to the side and I chose another of the small leaves and then my next combo is going to be red but not a bright red. I wanted something that was more like a coral red that had just a touch of orange tone in it. So I chose R32, R35, and R37, and that's going to give me a really vivid pop on that card that I think just really livens up this scene. So again, starting with that R37 and blending out with the R35, and then I'll come in with that R32, and these colors work really well together. You don't have to do much effort at all to blend them. So I did two of the leaves in the pile, and then I came over and did this larger leaf that's separate off to the side. But I am going to go back and do one more of those leaves in the pile with this combo because I really wanted to feature these brighter jewel toned shades more than the next color that I'm going to add. The next color is just kind of to um, really bring in those fall vibes, but I really wanted those brighter colors to shine. So the last shade that I'm using on the leaves is brown, and I'm using E42, E43, and E44. 
The main reason that I picked the brown is because I'm going to be using some patterned paper on this card later on and these shades really match well with that. So I wanted to have that somewhere in the scene to just tie that in. And then I'm going to take those shades and color in the handle of the broom. I don't want it to be exactly the same, so I'm being pretty heavy handed with that E44 and blended it out with the E43. For the bottom of the rake, I wanted to do something that was not featured in the leaf pile but still complemented those colors. So I went with BG53 and BG57 and just added a little shading to the right hand side. And then I took the BG000 and added a little shading to the inner edge of that speech bubble. And then for the tennis ball, I wanted something that wasn't too bright, something that was more in this fall vibe. So I went with Y21 and Y26, trying to make it look like an old beat up ball. But I felt it needed just a touch of brightness, so I grabbed Y11 and added that to the mix. So all that's left is the little dog, and I decided that I wanted him to look like a beagle. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab the E30 and add a little bit of shading to what might end up being the white parts of his body. Some of that is going to get covered up, but I just added like some basic shading on there first. And then I'm going to move on to E31, E33, and E35. And I'm going to start by coloring in his ears adding that E35 in first for some shadow, and then I'm going to blend that out with the E33, and I'll save a little room on the front ear for the E31 for a highlight. And then I'm taking that E31 and kind of sketching in where I want his little patches to be. So I'm giving him some brown patches over each of his eyes coming down from his forehead, and then I'm going to do kind of like, I don't know, it's kind of like the shape of an avocado, not quite as rounded, maybe more like a violin. I don't know, I just kind of did like um, a little shape that was kind of like bumped out in two places for his back. And then I gave him a little bit of color on his uh, front paws as well. So then once I had that like drawn in, I went in with my darkest shade, the E35, and added the shadows, and then I blended forward with the E33, and then I'm coming in with that E31 and filling that in. And then I took a moment to kind of assess how it was going and decided that I wanted his ears to be a bit darker. So I added in the E37 and then did a second layer on those ears, blending out with the E35 and the E33. And then I wanted to add a darker patch down his back. So I pulled out the E44 and the E47, which is going to tie in to the leaves that I already did. So I just added a bit of that overlapping the brown patches on his back and that little spot on his front paw. I blended the transition with the E31 and then trimmed these out with their matching dies. And I wanted to share a little tip with you guys. There's no die for the ball from the Critters in the Dog Park stamp set, but the ornament from Trim the Tree has a die that is almost a perfect match. So I used that to trim it out and then I trimmed down a piece of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock with the second largest of the large stitch rectangle stackables. I have my large and small together. So I'm going to use the cloudy stencil to create a sky, but I wanted something that was kind of like a peachy or salmon color, and I didn't have any distress oxides that would match. So I decided to grab the Lawn Fawn Peachy Keen ink, and that is what I'm using to create my sky. So I'm just blending that on with a mini ink blending tool and turning that stencil each time so I get a different cloud formation. I'm being really soft with that ink because I don't want it to get too dark. I want to keep it kind of soft and hazy looking, nice and dreamy for like a, a fall sunset. 
And then I just added a touch of color down at the bottom so that bottom cloud wouldn't be so stark white. And then I'm grabbing some celery stick ink and I'm going to blend that onto the bottom. The line at the top doesn't really need to be like too defined because it's going to get covered up in this scene anyway. So I'm just going back and forth and creating a basic ground look and trying to make it relatively straight. And then I'm going to take some of that ink and splatter that on. So I'm going to use an acrylic block and water that down. And before I splatter it, I'm going to take that cloud stencil and just use that as a mask for the grass so I don't get that darker pink color in the grass. So that would be kind of weird. And then I'm going to swap that and move the stencil up and do the same thing for the bottom. Once I have my colors splattered on there, I'm also going to grab my Gansai Tambi Starry Colors and I'm going to use the lighter gold shade over here, number 905. And I just watered that down and then I'm going to tap that against my finger so I get some nice splatters. This one's super pale so it's a subtle detail but it'll really shine when you tip the card into the light. So I'm going to set that panel aside to dry completely and once it has I popped it in my Misty so that I could stamp my sentiment and I used some Gathered Twigs Distress Oxide for that at first because I wanted something that would lay over the Distress Oxide that's already on there but it kind of got a little clumpy under the word hello so I decided to cover that up by stamping onto a white piece of cardstock. It's the same piece that I die cut my images out of and then I'm going to die cut that sentiment out and layer it over top. And first I did use that Distress Oxide ink again but this time it stamped out perfectly but I didn't like the positioning of the word hello. Um, it's in line with the bottom of the word translation and I thought it should be more in the center of that colon. So I cleaned that off completely and decided that I would just use some Lawn Fawn Walnut ink. I repositioned those words and moved it over a little bit um, towards the center so that I would have room to die cut it with the Everyday Sentiment banners so it would have a little room for those flag ends. And then I stamped that down one more time. So normally I would have just cut all of this part out of the video um, until the final stamping, but I thought maybe it's good to show you guys that it's okay to change your mind sometimes if something isn't working the way that you want it to. You know, you can change directions and I like that so much better in that walnut ink. It's a little bit darker and just a little clearer, I think. So now I'm going to stamp on the inside of my card. I trimmed down a piece of Lawn Fawn Apricot cardstock to be a standard A2 size card. So it's four and a quarter wide by five and a half tall. And then I'm stamping in that Peachy Keen ink once again. I did the little dirt pile from A Bug Deal, the little dog from Joy to All once again, and then the sentiment is from the Critter Chatter Pets. And then I just masked off the top of that dirt pile really simply and I'm going to stamp this little dog bone from Critters in the Dog Park so that it'll be kind of popping up so the little dog is digging up his treat. So I thought that would be really cute. The pattern paper I'm using is from the Sweater Weather Remix 6x6 pad and my intention all along was to use this brown plaid but then I saw this magenta tone on tone print and I almost changed my mind but in the end I decided that I'm going to use both of them and I'm going to die cut them with the largest of the large stitch rectangle stackables. Like I said, I have the large and small together on the same magnetic sheet. So the plaid pattern I'm going to add to cover the entire front of my card. And then the magenta print, that's going to go really well with that plaid since it's a super small little detail in that uh, print so they really match well together and layer nicely so I added that across the center of my card and just made sure it was on there nice and straight 
I added some foam tape to the back of my focal panel. So I'll peel off the release papers, line that up in the center of my card, and then press that down into place. So now I'm ready to decorate everything. The first thing I'm gonna do is cover up that mistake of the sentiment. I trim that banner down, like I said, and then I'm gonna add some liquid glue over top of that and glue that right over top so nobody will ever know except for you guys. And then I'm going to take the large leaf pile. I'm gonna add the liquid glue down at the bottom so that I have room to slide my little pup behind. So I'm gonna have him popping up out of that leaf pile. And I was trying to figure out how far to have him down, but I just love the cute little details of his legs and tail. So I have him kind of popped up pretty far up there. And then right near him, I'm going to add that little sentiment that says Bow Wow. I'll take the rake and I'm going to add that leaning on one side of the leaves. Originally I was gonna put it on the left, but decided to put it on the right to kind of balance out that little speech bubble. And then I'm going to uh, take the little tennis ball and add that down on the left toward the bottom. So it's kind of been forgotten um, when he was playing and once he saw that leaf pile, he decided to change courses and uh, jump in there instead. So the little red leaf, or I should say the larger red leaf, I'm gonna tuck behind that tennis ball to kind of integrate it a little more in the scene. And then the purple leaf, I'm going to add opposite that on the right hand side. And then the magenta leaf, I'm going to add kind of in front of him as if they're interacting. And then I decided to stamp a little swirl mark. So I'm using some hippo ink and I'm taking that little swirl from a bug deal and stamping that near that leaf. I decided that the top right corner was a little too empty though. So I stamped and colored one more of those small leaves in the brown shades. And I'm going to add that in that top right corner. And then I'm going to stamp that little swirl mark one more time up there. And then I decided I, I usually like things in threes. So I was gonna add one more swirl mark down at the bottom, but it was a little too long. So I just wiped off some of the ink and stamped that down. So it gives it a totally different look. And then I wanted to add a bit more sparkle to this card, so I decided to go with some platinum stickles because they're very close to the shade that I used on the background splatters with that Gansai Tambi watercolors. Normally, when I use the Stardust stickles, I put it in the darkest shadows, but the Stardust stickles doesn't cover up the coloring, whereas this does. So I decided instead to put it in the lighter areas, the little highlights, and I'm just using the Team CS bit. I didn't want to get too carried away with it. Um, I just wanted it to look like maybe the leaves had a little bit of gold leaf on them. So I'm squeezing out the tiniest amount and then smearing that around with the nib and um, just adding a little bit to each of those leaves. So once I have that done, I'm going to lift that up to the camera and I'll tip that into the light so you can see how it catches and sparkles. And you can see all the little tiny shimmer in the background as well. And then there is another peek at the inside I had so much fun playing with that adorable little puppy. I think he could be so many different breeds of dogs, just depending on how you color him. If you're as happy as I am about more Lawn Fawn Pups, please hit that like button and subscribe. Ring that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. I post new ones every Monday and Friday. If you're interested in these products, I'll have them listed and linked in the description bar below. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought you might also enjoy. Thank you guys so much again for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye-bye.